Hello, and welcome to another broadcast of uh, Project CSK. Today, I'm going to be continuing the development of uh, roughly where I left it off last time. Unfortunately, today, I've been having some really strange uh, complications with OBS. The audio and video do not sync correctly for some strange reason. Right now, it is working, but I honestly don't understand what is going on there because uh, I, I tried everything. It just sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work at all. No matter what I do, I can't get it to be consistent. Uh, my solution is basically to restart OBS multiple times, toggle off and on the settings, check to make sure that the delays are correct, uh, make sure everything is configured correctly. That doesn't work, close and restart OBS again and hope for the best. If that doesn't work, then I restart my computer and rinse and repeat again and again and again until OBS works. And I've run OBS in administra administrative mode and just standard mode as well. And still I'm having some complications periodically, which is what's so strange about it is I don't understand why it would even do that in the first place. It doesn't make sense to me, but regardless, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I just got to deal with it for now until I figure out exactly what the complication is so I can address it at that time. But for right now, it seems to be working, I think. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be continuing my development of where I left it off before. And uh, I I've, I've do work on the project offline just because there's some things that uh, I do uh, periodically for short periods of time. And it doesn't really make sense to broadcast that stuff. But right now, my focus, um, uh, I did the bomb explosion visual effect. And then after that, uh, what I did is I did the um, round end uh, stats page. So when the round ends, um, you get this nice uh, stats page. Actually, I can show you that real quick. Let me change to the other scene. So I'll go scenes loading because I'll need to log in. Um, it's going to look a little strange right now because there will be like, floating characters and whatnot, but um, that's okay. You'll get to see what I mean anyway. I'm just logging in, going to the game room. So you can see the floating character in the middle there. Just ignore the floating character. It's uh, my next test that I'm going to be doing. Okay. All right, and that's the stats page that comes up. Uh, the stats page, it doesn't show up too well uh, in the design view or the scene view, but it does uh, show up correctly in the game view. Uh, I'm not concerned about it. But anyway, uh, I got that part working, which is data that comes from the server to the client, and the client takes the data, parses through it, chops it up, formats it in a way that it can be presentable and then displays the uh, the stats panel and the stats panel then uh, populates that information at the appropriate time. I've moved on from that and what I did shortly after that was uh, right now I'm trying to get input working. Now input, uh, there's various different ways of input. And this particular method of input that I'm doing is I want it to be cross-platform compatible. Uh, and I want it to be intuitive and I want it to be user-friendly. And uh, that's really complicated. And the reason why that's complicated is because I have to take into account mouse and keyboard, right? Joystick and then touch screen and potentially all of them simultaneously, right? Because um, I could implement it, so you have to alternate between inputs, but that is not very intuitive. It's not very user-friendly. So what I think the best solution is to have all of them working simultaneously and get that system up and running. So to me, that would be the ideal solution. And the reason why I say an ideal solution is because it's not so simple. And I'll illustrate an example of that visually here, just so you get a better understanding of it. 
right? So usually um, you have mouse uh, and keyboard. Those are your best forms of input for accuracy and just overall usability. And that's pretty standard to have. Um, mouse and keyboard. So that's not really uh, a complication, but the complication comes from mixing the inputs, right? Because mouse and keyboard and joystick, they work together fine. But when you add in touch screen, that's where the complication uh, comes in. Because touch screen means you can shift the focus of input at any specific time from one object to another, to an input field, to outside of an input field, to a menu navigation, and so on and so forth. And that's where the complication comes in. So in this particular case, um, what I did is I recently got the chat panel working in a way that I'm, I'm satisfied with it so that when you, uh, and let me show you what I mean by that. I'll run it real quick. So by default, the chat panel okay, is non-selectable. There's nothing you can do. It does not interact with the mouse or anything like that because it kind of just sits there in the background and it's locked. Any new chat coming in from the server, of course, would um, populate the information and it would uh, behave appropriately and it would scroll to the bottom or bottom lock, however you want to call it. But um, what about when you do want to interact with it and you want to move the, the mouse over it and you're clicking and it's like, well, I, I can't interact with that right now. And it's understandable. And you'll see what I mean by that shortly. So how do you unlock it? You just click on the input field and the input field unlocks it. So now this is interactable. And the reason why I did that is you can see my character moving. That's awesome. Is So you have all this chat, okay? And then imagine if there is a on-screen soft uh, controller directly on top of it, a circle, which I'm going to do very shortly, on top of this. So if you have input coming from the circle and you have input coming from this, how do you differentiate which input you should be taking and which one you should not be taking, right? And that's something I'm still trying to figure out an appropriate system for. And that's what I'm working on right now. I'm going to build the functionality first and then uh, tweak it to make sure that it's uh, user friendly and it's intuitive. The idea with it is that at any time you click outside of this area, you will take focus away from this in essence and it'll lock. This will never be unlocked, which is the chat input area. Neither will this, so that'll always be available. But as soon as I click outside of that area, it locks. You click inside of the input field, it unlocks and it allows you to scroll. But as soon as you click outside of the, uh, the area onto the stage anywhere, it doesn't matter what you click on, this locks again. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that I'm, and I'm going to hook it in the, uh, the on-screen controller joystick so that let's say your joystick is right here, but you want to chat, right? You click on here, this becomes active and the joystick fades out or it gets disabled and that becomes inactive. So with your finger, you can scroll up and down and you can swipe up and down. But let's say you want to go back to your joystick, right? And you want to have joystick control again. Uh, the common thing to do in all games is just with a mouse and keyboard or anything, just to click on the uh, empty space on the game. And that's exactly what would switch it back. So then that would lock this, the input, or sorry, not the input. The input's always unlocked. But that would lock the text display area. And it would bring into focus a circular uh touch screen, uh, soft screen controller, which would then be used for the user input. And in that way, you can alternate between them. Of course, uh, I would like to add shortcuts uh, to some degree. So let's say you have a keyboard attached, uh, or keyboard and mouse attached to your um, tablet, for example and you want to use all the controls. So I do want that to, to be able to function properly as well. And that's what I'm going to be doing uh, right now.
So the functionality of uh, focus and loss of focus to the input field and loss of focus to the text display area, that's already been implemented. I did that already. The character is my test character. It can move with uh, keyboard. It can move with uh, my my joystick as well. And it uh, it's supposed to, anyway. Did I? Oh, right. I have to... Sorry, I need to enable this one tool that I use. It's called SCP Server. It makes my uh, joystick input behave as uh, Xbox uh, input. So there's my joystick input now. All right, and that's the analog pad and the D-pad, uh, the left stick. They all work the same. Um, it, it's the same. So whether I'm using that or if I'm using keyboard arrows, it all works the same. And now I want to add the on-screen controls. So all three methods um, should be able to work uh, at the same time. And uh, to tell you the truth, I've never implemented a on-screen uh, joystick before, ever. Uh, I've never really created a properly functioning one. I've, I've messed around with it conceptually, yes, but uh, and, and I think I did it uh, some time ago with a prototype, uh, but I've never actually implemented one in a way that I would intend to use. So this will be a first for me. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I could grab something uh, off the web and just use it or something in the Unity uh, store. I'm sure there's free ones out there, but I want to implement one because I like to make these things and I like to have control over them and get a good understanding of how they tie in together. So if there's any complications or conflict somewhere, I know exactly how to address it because one, I made it, two, uh, it's a really good learning experience. And this is what I like to do is make stuff and learn from it. Uh, and what I'll do likely is afterwards, if I see that the solution of what I've implemented is not that great, then I'll research online and see how other people implemented theirs. And I will borrow concepts uh, from theirs to improve mine. Uh, and for me to also learn from as well. So moving forward, I get a better understanding of it and my overall knowledge improves ever so slightly. Okay, so first step is of course to to make the uh, the joystick, uh, the, the soft screen, uh, uh, on-screen joystick. And that's what I'm gonna do. I have my assets already. Where's my assets? And there's my assets. So the circle, would represent, of course, the background of the joystick. And then the arrow, I'll use it for all four directions. Uh, that'll be the four directions of the joystick. I was thinking of making it like a, uh, uh, not so much a four directional button, but freeform movement. And in my experience, freeform movements, they're nice to have, but they're not always ideal in all situations. So what I may do is I'll start here and then what I'll do is I'll implement the functionality into it so it could be a switch to be uh, any type of movement input, whether it's uh, directional only, left, right, up, down. Excuse me. So it could be direction only, uh, left, right, up, down, or whatever. Um, or it could be a soft, uh, sorry, not a soft, but a freeform movement of um, you press uh, your finger into the center and then from there um, you could move around. And then there's also another variation of that as well that I believe it, um, what it does is when you press your finger anywhere uh, within a, a general vicinity of the screen, it'll uh, anchor the, the zero, zero coordinate to where you pressed, and then any direction you move forward from there will, um, will result in a directional movement. But as you keep moving your finger around, the anchor position also traces behind your finger ever so slightly. So if you're dragging all the way across the screen, you can still go the opposite direction by only moving a very small amount instead of going to the original anchor position of where you first set your finger onto the screen. Uh, 
those are the three I think that I'm aware of, but I'm not going to get into the other two for right now. I just want to implement this one because I think this would uh, be a good starting point. And what I want is the core functionality so that later I can come back to it and I can continue to add on to it on an as needed basis. Anyway, so let's get started on this thing. Okay, so I have my, uh, my image already sliced and that's ready to go. What I need to do is build in the functionality of the button itself. I don't know how much of it I'll get done um, during the broadcast today, but I'll for sure be continuing the broadcast tomorrow morning as well on Saturday. And uh, I'll do a longer broadcast then. So I think maybe I will make majority of the progress then, but I want to get a good start on it tonight. And there's still some time uh, tonight because uh, I just started streaming. So uh, let's see where, what we can get done tonight. Okay, so I want to go into my images and I want to grab the image, of course, that uh, I made. I believe it's this, nope, wrong, that one. Okay, so that's the one that I'm going to make. For right now, I'm just going to make an empty uh, object on the uh, stage. I will, do I want to nest it? Yeah, I will nest it under this object. So this object, I will call it um, game controller. And then under that, uh, what I'll do is I will make two nested game objects under that. One of them will be the circular background, uh, which I'll just call BG. And then the other will be the directions, which will be the, um, we'll start with one. We'll say arrow right. Okay, so BG, of course, would need a sprite renderer, as would uh, the arrow. And the reason why I'm using this is because I don't intend to use Unity buttons. In my experience, Unity buttons are fantastic. They are feature rich. They can do all kinds of amazing things, but they have so much overhead that you take a huge performance loss with them. And uh, I'm comfortable with just making my own simplistic button for now and then figure out what's a more appropriate solution down the line. And if that means it's got to be a Unity button, so be it. But I don't think I want to go that approach. I'd rather make my own so it's lightweight and I can use it um, just as easily as a Unity button, because I don't need all that functionality. I just need it to do a, the very most basic thing, which is to take input uh, on mouse press and release. That's really all I need it to do. So that's what I'm going to implement. Okay, so where is my, okay. that one is my circle. So that'll be my background. And then my arrow will be that one. Oh, I think I got them backwards. Yeah, I think I got them backwards. Whoops. Yeah, it's backwards. Switch that to that and then switch that one to the arrow, okay? So of course, by doing this, I'm going to have to um, build out the um, the classes and everything, because the there's, there's nothing. This is just a basic object right now. It's a circle with an arrow. It, it doesn't do anything. And for simplicity purposes, I'll just move it over here. So currently, I don't want to implement that overlapping functionality that I just mentioned. Uh, that's something that I will implement, but for right now, I'll just move it to the center area here and give it its core functionality. And then from there, I'll branch off and I'll give it um, the extended functionality and the full functionality down the line when it's ready at that point. So first thing, of course, is I need to make a button. And that button class, I don't have one. 
so it'll be something basic that I will just uh, throw together, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'll just make something really basic for now. And then um, I have some classes from another project that I did where I did do some buttons and, and whatnot. I don't know if I, know, I want to bring that in. I think I want to keep this one simple and clean for now. And then if I need to, what I'll do is I will merge any other functionality uh, that I may need down the line. But for right now, I'll just make it very basic. So I'll go into my custom components. And I will create, yeah, I'll just create a C-sharp script and I'll call it, um, no, I will call it on-screen joystick button. Okay, so I have my on-screen joystick button. Where did it go? Okay, there it is. I'll give it a quick namespace because um, just to keep everything consistent. We'll go namespace. I'll give it my uh, little namespace that I like to do. Okay, so this will extend mono behavior. This will probably not use the start now, but what I want is I want on mouse down and I want uh, on mouse uh, up, right? And that's the great thing about extending from mono behavior is you can just, uh, just use it just like that. Of course, I do need to give it a collider so that you can interact with it. And I'll get to that shortly. But for right now, I just want to make sure that it's working. So what I like to do is I like to do a debug log. And I will type in there mouse down. Okay. And I'll copy that. Oops. Okay. And then uh, mouse up. Right, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll go to the arrow, and of course I'll make a prefab of this later. But um, let's see, what collider would be ideal? Let's just go with um, collider, circle collider, circular. <clears throat> hmm. You could go with box collider, but the thing with a, a box collider 2D is that it takes on a rectangular shape. Wait, is that what I want? No, it's not a collider. What am I thinking? Sorry, let me just look at this other class that I did. Is that it? This is one of my other classes that I did. It's really convoluted and it's something that I don't want to use, but I will reference it from time to time just to make sure that um, the core functionality is there because it's, it's a really convoluted class. I think it was a polygon collider.
now. Hmm. This is what happens when you don't code something for a long time and you kind of forget um, what you're supposed to be implementing, but that's okay. I mean, I don't mind broadcasting this stuff live because I think it, it helps get a better understanding of it in that you can't just fly through code and expect it to be perfect all the time. Because I see, uh, I watch a fair amount of YouTube videos of people making stuff and there's a lot of heavy editing don't get me wrong, those guys are amazing at what they do, and they're far more knowledgeable than I am uh, in, in many areas. But at certain times, it, 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 there's just so many cuts. You can see it going from one cut to another cut to another cut. And, uh, you know, of course, you want to keep the video short. But at the same time, um, it, it takes away from it a little bit because you don't see all the challenges that uh, they're going through. So what I'll do is I'll try to find a button. No, I don't want that. I want one of my custom buttons. Okay. One sec. Sorry, you don't you don't see this part because I um I have OBS set up in a way where it it, it locks everything except for uh, the items that I specifically tell it to display. So you don't actually get to see the other part. Uh, I do apologize for that, but um, I'm just checking into this really quickly just to see how I made that one button because I don't want to use a Unity component as a button. What I want to do is I want to just keep the button very simple and I want to make it uh, in a way that's ideal for this. And by the looks of it, I did use a polygon collider before, but I don't want to do that. What I'll do is I'll just use a um, a box collider 2D, just because it's more efficient in my opinion. Wait, that's it's completely the wrong object. Okay, that's what I want to add it on to. Okay, so there's our collider, and I should be able to interact with it. I thought it was a box collider 2D, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I sometimes forget these things just because I don't have... Um, just because I don't have, um, I don't make buttons all that often, I mean. Sorry, I'm just going to respond to this one message real good, real quickly. Okay, so uh, it's time to just test to see that the button works. The good thing with doing uh, on mouse down and on mouse up is I believe um, it works both with a finger input so touch screen input as well as it works with um at least i think it should work with on screen hmm oh right i didn't link the class that's right Okay, here we go again. I think it should output at this time. No, huh? Okay.
Okay, one sec. For those of you joining at this time, uh, thank you for joining. What I'm doing is I'm broadcasting the creation. It was something that I've been doing for some time, the creation of the development, should I say, of a project that I've been working on for some time. This is a, uh, a flash project that I did originally some time ago. And what I'm in the process of doing is rebuilding it in Unity so that it can be cross-platform compatible. Yes, it's going to take me a long time to get to where I want it to be, but that's okay. That's that's the fun part of it, actually. It's not about the the end result. It's about how you get there from here to there and uh, learning uh, so many things in the along the way, too. And that's what makes it really interesting in that uh, there's just so many details that you can learn from that uh, you normally wouldn't even think of until you're put into that situation where you have to implement that kind of functionality. So you have to think a little bit outside the box, be open-minded, of course, and uh, be willing to uh, just uh, you know, do what it takes to get it to work, but then uh, come back at a later time and clean it up so that you can implement a proper solution for the uh, desired uh, intent. <clears throat> So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get this button working. And I think I'm overlooking something really obvious, which I often do. Because um, as far as I know, I think this should be working in the most basic form of a button, which is not a Unity button, I'm making my own because the Unity button has a lot of overhead with it. Oh, I don't want to print, oops. A Unity button has a lot of overhead that goes with it and that's not um, what I want to do. So button start is called Interesting. Okay. And uh, at any time, if you have questions or anything, uh, feel free to ask me uh, on stream, either on uh, Twitch or Discord. Either or is fine. You're welcome to ask me any questions, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, Right now, again, I'm still looking at this um, other reference that I did. It's a really convoluted uh, class from a long time ago, and I don't believe is an appropriate class to um, to implement into the current uh, project. So I'm just referencing it to see uh, how I implemented it because from what I can see, uh, making a button should be really basic and simple and it should work. I just can't seem to uh, get it to work for whatever reason. I think I'm really overlooking something very basic. Wait, does it need a canvas? I will test that theory. Okay, 
So that theory is a no. I'll remove that. Okay, so let's see. I got my button. Hmm. Interesting. So the idea, um, I'm just thinking out loud here. The idea would be then, once I get the directional on-screen pad working, I'll need to still implement it for it to work um, properly with the keyboard, mouse, and joystick all at the same time. And that's going to be a little bit tricky. And the reason why it's going to be tricky is that there's overlapping menus potentially going to be conflicting. And then I still need to hook in. Like currently, the, the joystick and the keyboard and mouse So currently, the joystick, the keyboard, and mouse, they use the Unity's new input system, which I have configured. And it's um, this one here. So on the bottom left of the screen, you can see it. this is my um, input system uh, that I've set up from Unity. And uh, this is actually really cool. I like this uh, new input system that Unity has versus the previous one that they had. The previous one, don't get me wrong, that was pretty good. But the new input system, in my opinion, is far superior than uh, the previous one. And it's just capable of so much more. In addition to that, they allow you to, to combine inputs and have them behave the same, like arrow right and uh, D. Uh, can be the same uh, input and they can uh, trigger the same internal event as joystick right or D-pad right from a joystick. That's pretty cool. And then you can mask inputs as well. I haven't quite gotten that deep into it to do masked inputs with uh, different types of um, of masking and conditional logic to affect the input in that manner. But what I have done is I have um, a basic one set up, as you can see in the bottom, or sorry, did I hide it? In the bottom left there. So what you can do is you can go in and you can configure them to behave as you want. So you can see over here, uh, space behaves the same as uh, gamepad button south. Gamepad button south would of course be the bottom one out of the four buttons. And it's usually considered as the primary button or button input zero on X input controllers. I'm not sure about the PS3 controller, but um, I know on uh, Xbox for their X input system, button zero is the button south that uh, they're calling it in Unity. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I really do like the way that that works overall. Um, I believe it's still something that they're working on, which is great because I'd like to see that kind of um, input system. I know it's a bit more complex than their previous uh, input system, which basically left you to do everything on your own. And I understand that the, the old system, it, it was good because it was very simplistic. But the new system, it, it definitely has its place and it's superior to the old system. 
it's just a matter of time until it fully replaces it. And it's something that everyone's going to have to get used to regardless anyway as a developer. And it's just something you're going to have to learn to adapt to. Will they make a simpler version of it? I don't know. But I think there's enough information tutorials out there right now that can help you get a good understanding of it so that you can implement it in the way that you want it to. But at the same time, I mean, it's hard to say sometimes because I know when it first came out, it, it was in early beta, it had some complications and it was difficult uh, to use at that time. So I didn't bother with it myself. I left it until it became version one. When it became version one, which is I believe the version that I'm using right now, that's when I started using it. I was kind of aware of it, but I just steered clear of it until they resolved some of the bugs and complications that come with it. And once they addressed those things, then, uh, then I was willing to give it a try. And when I first gave it a try, I didn't understand it, to be honest. I was like, how do you get this to do this? It's, I wanted to do something very simple, but I just couldn't get it to do something so simple. And I spent so much time trying to figure it out. Eventually, I went on YouTube and I just started watching YouTube videos. And those videos, a lot of them were good, but none of them, from what I seen, gave you the whole picture, right? And uh, it's up to you to kind of piece it together conceptually in your mind so you get an understanding of how it works. And once you get an understanding of how it works, then that's when, you know, it starts to make sense. And that's when you start to build up on it and it gets to be more and more of what you want it to be. And it took me a while uh, to, to understand that as well. And it's something that, well, I mean, it's... It just takes some time to get used to, honestly. That's all it is. And I, I'm glad I'm using it because if I was using the old system still, the old input system, I would not, um, I would not be able to implement the things that I have implemented and the things that I want to implement with the ease that I'm currently uh, able to do this stuff in. So it would have been very difficult for me. But no, I think it's good. Uh, it's it's definitely uh, a nice improvement in my opinion. What I'd like to see is I would really like them to implement um, some more, I don't know, it, it's hard to say because it's, it's my opinion, of course, right? So I'm giving my opinion from my experiences of what, things that I would like and uh, I think there's definitely room for some improvements, but at the same time, uh, I can't knock them for anything. I think they've done a great job so far, which is why, I mean, I support them. Like I, I have a premium version, of course, uh, because I believe in their idea. What they're doing is really a good idea. And it's something that Flash initially was supposed to be with Adobe. Uh, and Adobe made a lot of promises and they just didn't keep them, to be honest. Adobe just made so many promises and they would not deliver on those promises. And it just led to more and more complications down the line, which was really unfortunate because that's not like, that's not the proper way, honestly. It's really uh, unfortunate that because I'm one of those people who believe the promises that Adobe made for Flash and their concept or their motto originally, um, when they deviated from Shockwave Player, which is what Flash came from, it was originally a part of the Shockwave Player. The Shockwave Player had full 3D capability, but it had this archaic language, programming language called Lingo. I think it was Lingo. Um, yeah, I do think it was Lingo. It was a written language in like how you write a sentence, not like how you write formulas in programming, nothing that looks modern. 
And there's good reason why you don't write code that way. It's because it is really difficult to make sense of it. It is really difficult. The modern method of programming is what it is because it had to evolve to what it is. So this is the latest evolution of it and it'll continue to improve. Lingo was something else. Oh, I, I tried it. And I just was like, no, I'm not doing this. It's not happening. And then uh, from Shockwave Player came Adobe Flash P Player, the original one, with ActionScript 1, which was their scripting language using the AVM1, ActionScript Virtual Machine 1, yeah. The performance on that was really bad, but still, their promise was develop once and deploy anywhere, or something along those lines. And... I really like that. Personally, as a developer or someone who likes to make things, that's a really cool concept. To be able to make something once and deploy it cross-platform on all systems, that's really something. That's something that's impressive. And that's something that uh, was one of the things that I believed that they would achieve. And they did try. It's not that they didn't try. They really tried, but they just couldn't get it to where uh, they could get it implemented. And then, of course, when Steve Jobs uh, declined them and shut them down on Apple and said, no, we're not putting this on the iPhone, that was pretty much the end of it. Everyone could see the end coming. And uh, Steve wasn't wrong. Uh, Steve Jobs was right in saying that the performance on it, because you're running it on a virtual machine, it will never, ever be the same as running natively. And it takes a huge performance hit, and it has a lot of extra complexity as a result of it, which makes it just that much more undesirable on any platform. And if you're the person who's in charge of a platform, you're not going to want something on your platform, on your hardware, on your devices that you're selling that is subpar and will not give the customers, the end user customers, the uh, intended desired um, uh, aesthetic feel and sleek design of uh, the product that it is that you're trying to represent. So yeah, that's, um, it's not gonna work simply. And then that was only the beginning of it though. And Adobe, they made so many mistakes after that and they made a lot of promises and they're supposed to do performance and hat enhancements with ActionScript Virtual 2, which they did, sorry, ActionScript Virtual Machine 2 and ActionScript Language 3.0. Uh, they did. It was good, but it just wasn't enough. It really wasn't. There's too many complications, too many bugs. Um, there was inconsistencies. And it, it was really a shame because I, I really liked working inside of that environment. Just the way that you could program and you could animate and you could do everything with keyframes, all of it in one application. That was amazing, really. It was revolutionary for its time. No one else had done that as far as I've seen to that extent that would make it like that, which is really disappointing in my opinion, because that was really good. I really like that. And uh, unfortunately, well, It just didn't work out. And I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes as well that uh, I'm not exactly aware of. And that's okay too. Um, but that's the short, the short version of it anyway. There's so much more going on. Okay, so yeah, I still haven't forgotten. I'm I'm trying to track down. I, I know I, I completely went off on a tangent there. Um, I, I'm trying to track down 
the functionality in this other class, but the the other classes that I met I made, they're they're so convoluted. They're really convoluted. And I don't want to use that stuff. I mean it works, but that's not what I want to bring in. I don't want to bring that into my current project. I want to keep it clean. And that's what I don't understand is that it should be working. The box collider should work. Because in the other class that I'm looking at it, yeah, I used a polygon collider 2D instead of a box collider 2D, which is understandable. But still, I stretched out the outer boundary similar to that of a box collider. So it's the same thing, pretty much. And that's it. And then I just tap into Mono Behavior's uh, ability for on mouse um, press and on mouse release for that functionality. Sorry, on mouse over and on mouse. Yes, on mouse over, on mouse exit, on mouse down, and on mouse up. So it should be working. I think it's just uh, usually like at this time, kind of end of night. It's not really end of night, but I mean after after a full day's worth of work and all the other stuff I did, and then I get online, I'm not quite as um, as aware, as as capable as, as I normally would be in the mornings when I'm well rested. And that's okay. You know, that's why I try to do the simpler stuff uh, near the end of the night. And then um, when I get a chance, uh, or sorry, in the mornings is the best chance or the best time for me to do the more um, complex stuff. So let's have a look at this again, okay? So this extends for mono behavior, that's correct. And the only thing that I wanna tap into is on mouse down and on mouse up. That's all I want. Right, the boundaries are correct. It has a sprite renderer. The layer that it's on and all that stuff, that doesn't matter. The script is attached to this game object, which would be my button. So when I run it, and I click anywhere on this object, it should trigger. Unless it's something, because I'm not using the old event system and the old input system. That could be it, because in this project, that's the only difference. I'm using the new input system. Let me actually search that real quick. So I'll bring up the browser real quick. I guess you don't need that. Um, so we'll go to Unity, new um, input system on mouse uh, down. Because I think that that's the only thing I can think of. that that's different from the okay so these guys are Okay, so this person's saying that it should still work the same, which 
I mean, it makes sense. But I can't help but to think that it's not, though. Let me see if there's any other results. New input system. Nope, nothing helpful there. Same thing. No responses. I don't know. I think it is the new input system that's causing this complication because come to think of it, I have yet to do a button using the new input system. So I may need to use mouse press event so I can capture the mouse click and then I can use the screen to world, screen to world. Yeah, I would need to go screen to world and then raycast from the screen to world position to see if a button is within the raycast uh, results and then look at the results and see what I get. I'm quite confident that that method would work. But I don't really want to do that. I, I was kind of hoping for a simple solution like before. Because otherwise, then how would it work if you can't capture these, um, the on mouse down and on mouse up events? Okay, so this guy's saying the same thing. The on mouse down not working anymore with new input system. Okay, so that would make more sense. Um, if you can't use the old input system code, so that would mean the code is still legacy, even though that exists. Um, okay. Okay, whatever. Instead of wasting time on it, I will just... Uh, Go the long way. I'll implement my own. Uh, I already have it in, where is it? Is it chat input display area? Yeah. So I have it here in this one that I did recently. Okay. So I'll just take that. And this is the new input system. So I want that. I need to instantiate it on the start. So on start, I create an instance of it and I add some listeners to it. On destroy, I definitely want to remove those listeners. So I'll add the, uh, on destroy, Okay, and then I need to implement that 
to that. Okay, so I can't use on mouse down and up anymore. Instead, what I'll use is that. I don't need that. I need input actions because it's a part of the input system, and that comes from Unity Engine dot input system. So I'll just duplicate that Unity Engine dot uh, input system. Okay, so that'll give me that. I'm already checking. Okay, so I I will save that because I was using that before, and I want to follow that same concept because I'm already doing a uh, raycast all, and then I'm filtering UI mask. That's actually a good idea. I do want to filter UI mask, but I will. I will take it out temporarily just because um, right now I don't want to do UI masking or anything like that. I just want to get results. That's all I want right now. Okay, so that's the basic of it, basics of it. And this should uh, give me results. So I'll run that. So on left click, it should say left button started. There we go. So left button started. This is using the new input system. Um, it basically, it uses this here that I implemented before. So in the input system, I have mouse left, okay, which captures mouse left event. And this is my names, but this is the actual what it does, the action and the behavior. So it's it binds to left mouse button. So I have a left mouse button, right mouse button, and then a middle mouse button. Each one of those has a uh, corresponding sub event, or should I say event, which is the the start. There is a start. There is what was it again? Sorry, I'll need to refresh my memory. So it was start, complete, or something. No, start, canceled. Canceled would be the complete. And then what's the other state? Performed? No. Triggered? Where am I using it? Anyway, so it has these three events you can tap into. I only care about the start right now. Start means when it's pressed. The start means down in this particular case. So what I'm saying is uh, control system, mouse left on start, listen to this event and go handle uh, mouse left started. Uh, started meaning down. And then what I do is I capture the um, mouse position using the camera because it comes from the camera. Without camera, you can't get mouse position as far as I know because you need something to, to use as a reference guide. So what you do is you, um, you use camera, sorry, use camera for converting a screen to world position. You can get mouse uh, data at any time. And to do that, you go mouse current position, read values. The values uh, gets converted through the camera from screen position, meaning whatever your screen resolution is, um, to the world position. And then I use the world position to do a raycast all. And from that raycast, I'm able to um, capture it. So what I need to do is I need to also add the release, right? Because I want pressed and I want released. I don't care, I think, about held down state. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So I have the start there, mouse left start right below it. I'll go, let's see, what was that event name anyway? I think it's canceled. Start dot, is it can canceled? This is really the wrong name. It shouldn't be that. 
Is it canceled? It's canceled, performed, and started. No, that's what it is. Canceled, performed, and started. Okay, so canceled means released in this case. So mouse left canceled. I'll need to make the function of call, of course, canceled. But because I added it, uh, I always like to remove it. So on on start, meaning on create add, and then on um, on destroy, I want to remove. So on destroy, I'm just cleaning up. Okay, and then I'll just take one of these functions and I'll just copy it. Okay, it's giving me a duplicate function warning. That's okay. I got the name right here. Oops, wrong one. I want to name this one. Okay, so this one will be um, left mouse released. Right? So on the released, uh, wait, on the released, I do need to raycast. I do need to raycast on release. That's why it was so nice to have that built in. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm not using the Raycast data uh, at this specific time. Right now, I think it's just listening to it globally. Is it? Now that I think about it, I'm not sure. Yeah, now it's global. But anyway, uh, I, I will hone it into that uh, the bounding box uh, very soon. But at any time, I press means started. Released means canceled. So left mouse is working input. Now I just need to test to make sure that the raycast is hitting something. So on raycast hit, if, and uh, I'll, I'll clean it up later, but if hit length equals zero means it hit nothing, I want to return. If it did return something, that means uh, something was hit. So this way, it'll limit it down to the collider that I added. And I'm going to do the exact same here. So I will take that and go right here. And then I'll move this down here past that. OK, that just basically makes it so the mouse events, they have to be within this uh, rectangle which is the box collider 2D, right? That way it means only within that space is it considered a part of this specific button. And that should work, right? Oh, let me select it. Okay, so that works. And when I go on top of it, yeah. So that's working exactly how a button should work. So that captures press and release. Of course, that needs to be cleaned up later, but I'm not that concerned about it at this specific time. So the question is, now that I've captured that, how do I relay that to the input system to go tap it into here, right? Because I want the input system now to go into, where was it, input... Movement. So movement, I have WASD, right? Because that's my keyboards. I have arrows, left, right, up, and down. I have joystick, D-pad. Do I not have... Do I not have... But I... Oh, right. I, I separated them out. Okay. All right, so yeah, no. Uh, so I want to basically add it into here so it does the same, so that the, the character will pick it up. So the question is, now that I captured this, how do I give it right back to the input system for it to trigger that? 
that's the question. And that's what I'm going to find out. Okay, let's see what options we have. Okay, so at this point, I know it's hit. So what I can do is controller dot um, primary all, because that's the name of that one. What I want to do is I want to go to W, no, is it WASD? No, it's movement. Movement dot, let's see, can I force it to dispatch? What I'm looking for, oh, sorry, you don't see the drop down menu because it, it comes above the actual menu itself, or sorry, above the, uh, the application window. Um, but what I'm looking through is just the options that it has to see if I can force it to, to trigger that event. So instead of me listening to it only, what I'm doing is uh, I listen to the um, to the mouse left, but I capture it. I do my calculation to determine if a button is hit. And then what I want to do is I want to push that information depending on which button. And in this case, it would be arrow right, or it would be uh, whatever corresponding key or input for the right value. So instead of reading a value, I want to push a value so I can push the event And that's what I'm looking at right now. Okay, so clearly I don't know. So what I'll do is I will go to search engine. Okay, and then what I want is Unity uh, new input system push events. How to use Uh, maybe not push events. I think I want to trigger event. <laughs> so many people are having difficulties with the new event system, I feel their pain. I, I know what they're going through. It's a difficult struggle, but if you stick with it, you'll, you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. I promise you that. It just takes a while to get there, you know, and, and it's okay. You know, there's learning uh, with everything. There's a learning uh, process to it. Okay, so that's not the right search term. What I want to do is I want to force an event force event Okay, I think I'll just need to go to the event system itself, their API and just have a look at it. Oh, there's a new one. There's a 1.1. I started using it from the 1.0. I don't know. Am I using the 1.0 is the question. So what I'll do is I will go to Window uh, Packet Manager, Fetching Packets. I'm oh, still waiting. Okay. Where's the search? And then I will go uh, Input. System, I'm still using the 1.0. There's a 1.1, but I don't care to upgrade at this time. Okay, so they have a reference guide. What I want to see is how can I push an event back? I want to trigger an event. I don't want to only listen to it. I want to trigger the event. Nope, not installation. Quick guide. Input.
Okay, potentially an action. Can I push something? So they have input action map. You can get or you can set. Interesting. Now that I think about it, I can look at their custom class that comes with it. So their input system, when you go make a change and you save it, it makes you this class. So this is what their input system consists of. And this is the class that it makes. I'm curious because my custom events should be in here. Yeah, see all, all of my events that I made, they're all in here. It's like you change the settings and it, it creates this class, which is cool because then I can go into it and I can see what can I modify. So how can I leverage any of this to push the event back in through the system? Okay, so that's their callback. That's their listener add remove pointer read only. Come on, give me something I can use. Find. So it uses an action map. I'm guessing it's a dictionary because it looks like it's it's searching through a dictionary kind of thing. Is it a dictionary? Yeah, it's a map. Likely it's a dictionary. Okay, but I want to push an event through the system. Hmm. I'm quite sure it should be possible. Because this, this is only reading. This is not pushing. No, unfortunately, whoops, I didn't mean to pin that. No, I don't want to save. Wait, what was? Oh, wrong one. OK. So what I want to do is I want to see how can I push an event through the system. No, nothing there so far. Got callback. Callback is not really what I'm looking for. Input devices? No, definitely not. There has to be a way. There has to be a way. New input system. Push event trigger. No, definitely not. Trigger is not the right word. Push. I, the only thing I can think of is to push an event. Hopefully, someone else has asked the question. It's been answered. Key has been pressed. Gamepad. Nope. 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 Create a simplifier type. Nope. How can I do that? Let's see, what functions are available? Where am I? On left start. Yeah, so what I want is basically Started, nope, can't do that. Middle mouse dot C. Action map, that's a get only. That's a get only. Add binding, 
no, I don't want to modify it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to override. Binding mask, no bindings, canceled. It's an event, change bindings. Clone, what is controls? It's a get only. Okay, disable, dispose, enable, enabled, equals. Nope, those are all gets. I want to push interaction. What's interaction? Phase. Uh, no. Read value, remove action, remove binding, override, rename. Wow, you can do a lot of cool stuff to it. But I don't. Hmm. I mean, alternatively, of course. I have my own parallel event system that I made full on event system that I use. It's um, my event manager. This is a custom made event system that I made myself. And uh, it's it, it serves my needs. I could always bypass the Unity event system and use my own event system. But I want to... I want to keep it clean. I want to use the Unity system. That way, it, it all stays within the, the Unity framework. Uh, it, it stays within the Unity engine. Because having two event systems, yes, it, it serves my purpose because I use it primarily for the server communication. I find that the Unity event system is not quite adequate because my event system is very versatile and it does exactly what I need it to do because I implemented it that way in that it can dispatch events by listening to a specific object or it can dispatch global events, which is something that I don't believe the Unity system is capable of, possibly intentionally, because it would be abused. But for me, anything that is network traffic, in my opinion, and I want to capture a network event, I consider it a global uh, event. So it's dispatched globally, and it's only hooked into... Uh, meaning a listener is only added to it when it's appropriate. At no time uh, would something be hooked into it uh, and, and listen to uh, a network event if it didn't have a need to, right? And that's one of the strengths that my own event system allows. I'm not saying it's better by any means. I'm sure the Unity event system is far more capable than what my event system is, but my event system serves my specific purposes for the exact intent that I uh, want to use it for. So that's why it's really well suited for me. And I, I, I want to not have to do that, but I just can't help but to think, oh, sorry, I completely forgot that I had this, the browser open on top I do that quite often, sorry. It's something I'm still getting used to. I need to get one of those uh, uh, screens so I can just toggle buttons off and on. I've been meaning to set up my, uh, my Android tablet with that kind of functionality. I just haven't got around to figuring that all out yet. Anyway, what I want to do is not a read an event. I want to Unity input system write event. Let's see, is that even a thing?
Yeah, these search results, they're they're not that helpful, unfortunately. That's the thing with when something is kind of new still, it, it's difficult to find the search results that you want. So you, you get what you get kind of thing. I'm I'm confident there has to be a way. It wouldn't make sense for there to to not be a way to push an event through the system instead of only listening to the events. So what options do we have? Let's have a look at it. Okay, so what I want is movement, but I'll just make a temporary test one. So it's a new action, binding. What are my options? Paths. Virtual mouse? No, I don't want I don't want mouse at all. Let's see what other options are there? So this can listen to gamepad, joystick, keypad, mouse, pen. Oh, pen! I didn't even know it could do that. Pointer, sensor, of course, touch screen, track device, and other. What's other? A Cullis Rift HID? Nope. Usages? What's that? Submit. What is a submit? I don't know. How can I write to it? Yeah, I'm going to remove that. I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not sure at this time. I will likely have to think about it tonight. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to continue with this. I'll still, for a little bit longer, I, I'll, I'll try to find a solution, but I think it's getting near end of night, and I'm just not thinking clear enough. When it gets to this point, I don't see the big picture. And seeing the big picture is really important. So what I want is I want to be able to push an event, not listen. I want to push an event. Okay, so let's see. What are these options? No. What if I was to search for Unity System Force Event Dispatch? How to use hold interaction? I don't know what that means, but oh, the the pressed state. No, I don't want that. I wonder, is this an event that I can just invoke? So mouse middle dot, let's say uh, started dot, yeah. I was kind of hoping you could just go like invoke, similar to a Unity event. Because at the end of the day, it's still calling a delegate. The delegate function reference at its core, similar to how my event system works, it's just how C Sharp does it. Oops, don't need that. Hmm. Do you have any ideas? Okay, let's see. 
Nope. Introducing new input system. Nope, not what I want. Doesn't trigger anymore. No. Hmm. See, I can go Unity input system invoke event. See, what's this one? That's nothing. What about dispatch event? Is there a invoke zero? Is there a dispatch zero? Invoke, nope. Dispatch, nope. Trigger, nope. Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. I think maybe I'm going about this the wrong way because the event system, I know that it's quite feature rich. I mean, worst case, I could fall back to my event system and use that, but my event system is not implemented for anything other than the um, than the network communications between the client and the server. That's currently all I'm using it for. So I could use it for for inputs and whatnot, but it just doesn't feel right. Okay, well, I think I need to just think about it and do a bit more research. It doesn't make for any interesting stream um, if I'm just doing research, I think. Um, however, I think it's good to illustrate that an answer to, uh, to an obstacle like this or a challenge isn't always obvious, even though it could be something really simple that I'm overlooking. It could be just a simple call that I need to just call a single function. And I just don't know what that function is. And it's just a matter of learning it and understanding it. So that in the future, when I come across the same thing, uh, I would know exactly what the solution is or approximately uh, how to find the solution. I didn't make nowhere as close to progress as I would have liked for today, but that's okay too, because you can't always make progress. Sometimes things uh, don't work out in the way that you plan it, and that's okay. It's all part of development. Um, what I'll do, though, is I think I'm going to end this stream.
and then continue development on it tomorrow. So um, if you're here for tomorrow's stream, you'll see me continue pretty much where I left off here. I'll either A, find a solution to using the uh, new input system where I can um, force an event to be dispatched through the input system, or B, if I can't find it, or if I see it's just taking too much of my time, what I may do is I may just fall back to using my own event system because I know in detail how that works and I can tap into it and use it at my disposal in any way that I desire. But anyway, uh, I'm sorry, this stream wasn't that interesting. I was mostly talking and trying to stumble my way through stuff, but I think that's still uh, nice to share because as the uh, end user who gets to see it, or as someone who's a developer, you know, you can you can relate to a degree. And because sometimes you'll come across problems or challenges that are just uh they take so long to figure out. Like previously before this, I also got stuck for a while with the composite collider that didn't work the way that I thought it should have worked. And I eventually tracked it down to the Unity Composite Collider, which then I had to remove it because it just didn't give me the uh, the outcome that I wanted. It wasn't behaving the way that it should. There's definitely something uh, that's not right. Um, but yeah, these things happen, so I'm not worried about it. I'll get past this one just like how I get past every single other obstacle. It's just, uh, you just keep trying, and uh, eventually you find the solution. Either A, you find the solution, or you find a way to work around it. And that's okay, too, because that's all a part of programming. That's what makes it so interesting. Anyway, um, I think this is going to be the end of the stream. If I can, I would really like to get past this one point so then I can do a uh, build for the beta testers as well for those who are in the beta testing program. And I recently got set up with um, the iOS uh, system so that Unity will allow me, or should I say Apple will allow me to use the Unity uh, cloud compile system to build for iOS compatible devices. So that's a new thing that I'm going to try to do as well. Uh, but it's going to be interesting, I think. I have a feeling it, it, it'll go well. Because I've done most of the legwork for it. It's just a matter of getting the last little bits of it set up. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. Or maybe learned something from it along the way. If you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me in various different forms, either on the uh, website, uh, on the official Project CSK website, through Discord, through email, uh, through the forum, um, whatever method works for you, works for me. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me, and uh, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.